Hey guys, welcome back to another video brought to you by Doomsday Diesel. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to install an automatic drain for your shop air compressor so that when it starts up, it'll automatically drain all that water out of the bottom of your tank. So I got all sorts of parts laid out here so I can go over these with you and uh, I'll show you all these individual parts, but I don't even have enough room on this table for everything we're going to use in this video. So check out the link below. I'll put a parts link in the description so you can find all these. Basically everything I have here can be purchased online. Um, I did purchase this blue hose from the, the parts store along with a bunch of other stuff, but for the most part, you won't even have to leave your house if this is a project you want to tackle while staying at your house. But before we dive into all the parts and installing everything, I want to show you guys what I'm actually working with here and what my end goal is. So I got my shop compressor here. It's a 220 volt single phase. Uh, it's the pretty standard five horse, 60 gallon, two stage, a little over 15 CFM so I can paint with it. And I need really dry air for painting and the majority of the water actually collects in the bottom of the tank. Now this Quincy model actually has a really nice setup from the factory. Most of them have this awkward drain on the bottom you can't even get to and you have to lift the uh, compressor up to get to it. This one has a ball valve. It's a quarter inch MPT. It's right here um, mounted just like this. This white part and this vinyl hose, um, I added that. So. When you buy this one, it comes with this. You open it up and shoot the water out. So what I did for my drain is I don't want the water accumulating on my shop floor. So I bought this um, airline, ran it over to the wall, zip tied it to my propane line, which comes in from outside. And the way they installed the propane line was ran a piece of PVC pipe through the wall and siliconed it in. So I just ran the, poked a hole through the silicone, ran that outside, and that way it shoots out onto the ground outside and I don't have a mess in here. So my goal with this project is to basically put an automatic drain in between this ball valve and this push lock connector. That way if the uh, the auto drain ever fails on me i can shut this off and i can still use my my air tank otherwise i'll leave it open like that and we'll wire in an electronic 220 volt um, solenoid that'll open up every time the compressor turns on and it'll still drain out that same hose so now that you know what our end goal is let's go through the parts that we're going to need to do it and then let's actually install it in this video and get it working that way you guys can follow along at home if you want to do it yourselves now i'll put a little disclaimer out there i actually watched a video very similar to this um, to get some inspiration on how i wanted to do this but there were some discrepancies some things were incorrectly labeled there were a lot of parts that uh, I didn't like how they were done. They wouldn't meet electrical code. And so I wanted to make my own video to show you how to do this the most proper way that I see it could be done at a reasonable cost um, by yourself at, at home. So the first thing is you're gonna need a, an electric solenoid to open and close. It's gotta be normally closed, meaning that when it doesn't have power, it's gonna be closed. So the only time it's going to open up and let water out is when you send voltage to this thing. Now, I got this cheap um, Bayomin brand off Amazon. So the first thing I thought was, you know, I should be able to do this drain project for under 70 bucks. And that's not going to be the case if you want something quality that's going to last you for a long time and be reliable. But with that being said, I've tried this Bayomin pneumatic um, electromagnetic valve actually says electromagnetic electromagnetic nice 
That, that's a good sign this is going to be a piece of junk, which it is. I got this thing out. It's 15 bucks on Amazon. It took like forever and a day to show up. I think it was three weeks or four weeks. And several things were wrong with it. It's supposed to be normally closed. It's normally open. So that means it's leaking when you uh, plug it in. It only has two wires coming off of it, which means they expect you to ground to this body here. And I did not want to do that. I want to have all my wires enclosed in conduit. And the other problem with it is it was actually below the, the pressure rating for my compressor because I'm running 175 to 180 PSI. So I have to have something rated higher than that. But regardless, they market this as normally closed, but it's normally open, which means it's gonna, it's not gonna work. So this goes in the garbage. And you know it's junk because when I told them I received a normally open unit, they said, go ahead and throw that in the trash and we'll send you a refund. So as it was recommended in the other video, I got the ASCO Red Hat unit. Now this thing actually ended up being about 75 bucks. That was the cheapest I could find. But this thing, you can just tell it's quality when you pull it out of the box. So this guy here, it's actually rated to 210 PSI of air inlet pressure. This is 230 volts um, AC single phase. It has quarter inch NPT input and output. Uh, the wiring side has a half inch thread so my conduit end will actually thread in here and these uh, body threads are either a 10-32 or an m5 is what the instruction said it said it could be either one that'd be if you want to hard mount this with some screws or if you'd want to um, put an additional ground to these but this has a ground wire coming out of it so my only complaint about this besides the price is that and there's probably somebody out there watching this that's smarter than me that is going to say well that comes out really easy but this appears to be uh, basically permanently mounted in here this pigtail and if it was up to me on how to design this I'd make it so I could run continuous wire all the way into the solenoid and connect it because now I have to splice three wires and the more, the, the more stuff I have to splice, you know, the worse off I am. It's more work and so that's my only complaint though. Otherwise it feels like a quality unit. So what are we going to do to hook this up? Pretty simple. My air compressor uh, push lock connector will thread into this side here and then you can just go get a um, quarter inch male to male NPT adapter and that will thread in right here and to do that even though this already has the uh, pre-applied red dope I don't usually trust it the best thing I found for um, preventing leaks in the um, shop air system is this yellow gas pipe Teflon tape it's a little bit thicker you use two to three wraps and you're, you might only need two, two wraps since this already has the red pre-applied dope on it. And that's the only thing we should have to use um, Teflon tape on. Now as far as actually running these wires to where we're going to run them, I bought this blue flexible conduit. It was like eight bucks for 10 feet. This is half inch. They make these fittings that um, just push on, so it'll just snap on the end of the hose there. And then you cut this to length with a utility knife. And the other thing is you can run these wires through here. And then this half inch will actually just thread right into there. So we'll do that right now. Butts all the way down nice clean no exposed wires with this one everything will be in conduit super simple these are like 80 cents at the hardware store 
So the only parts I probably won't have a link for is going to be this conduit, these conduit connectors, as well as this uh, gang box that we're going to use for mounting our controller. Next thing you're going to need is some way to control that electric solenoid. So this guy's about 20 bucks or so on eBay. It's the uh, Omron H3Y-2. It's rated for 250 volts. And it's variable from 2 seconds to 5 seconds. Next thing we're going to need is a, a rail to mount that on. So this is DIN rail and it works like this. I can't slide it. It's, it's stationary. To remove it, pull this little orange piece and it pops right off. So we're going to cut this down. We're going to mount this inside here. Then we're going to take this plastic cover, cover it up so everything's enclosed. There are no exposed wires, no, no wire nuts, no nothing. Everything's under a cover. So the first step is to actually mount this box to our compressor. So the spot I like is right up underneath here on the side of the compressor. I'll be able to run everything to it. It's tucked back flush with this so it's protected and I have an easy routing with my power coming in and my power coming out. You can see my power coming out of my service panel up here into this flex conduit and into my switch. So what I plan to do is actually cut this and put the box right in the middle in line. So the first step is going to be to go to your service panel and shut the breaker off. Next thing we'll do is come over and take the cap cover off the switch on the compressor. Now you can see all of our wires here. The first thing that you should do, just to be safe, get out your voltmeter, set it to the appropriate AC voltage. So on mine it's 500 and 200, so I'll set it to 500 since this is 240 volts. And just make sure that you're not recording any voltage on the voltmeter. So you don't shock yourself. Even though we know we turned the breaker off, we just want to double check. So the way this works is we have a ground coming in, and that's the green. Then we have two blue wires that are going to be um, each leg of our 110 or our 120 volts. So we're going to hook wire into one leg from our service panel. So it'll have 110 volts and the other leg will actually connect to the motor side of the compressor. So once the compressor turns on, this switch here goes down and sends both of these wires power back out through this white and this black wire. And so once this switch turns on, now the wire that we splice into this white wire will send our other 110 volts back to our box. It'll get the 220 and then it'll trigger the solenoid to open up. So with all that being said, we got to take these out because we got to take this wire back out of the conduit so that we can put our box in line. And I can't believe how tight they make it underneath this little switch cover because I've seen some compressors that have all sorts of room to work with but this one really just has none at all. It's, it's pretty poor design. So the next thing we'll do is take our conduit and loosen it up. So 
now that we have our wire out of our conduit, we will figure out where we can get this to fit nicely and comfortably into our gang box and then we'll cut this in half. So I'll get all that done. All right, so now I got some of the, the dirty part done. Disassembled this box here. Um, all this stuff is extra stuff I pulled off of it and throw in the trash, but I was able to actually remove this top, which made it really convenient for drilling this out and transferring the holes to the compressor. So we've got our two holes drilled over here, got everything deburred. So now we'll be able to just uh, run our bolts basically in there and then we can fix our steel conduit so that it connects into the box. So I'm going to do that and then I'll rejoin you. We're going to go ahead and work on the wiring for the solenoid here. And so I got this little box of wiring off Amazon because I only needed a couple feet and it was going to end up costing me well over 30 or 40 bucks to get the, the wire I needed at the department store. Just because they only sell it in these massive rolls of like 25 or 50 feet. Because all we're doing is running about 6 feet up from the solenoid up to the control box on the side of the compressor. So I need multiple colors. You can't use the same color for everything. And color coding is really important with wiring. Um, that other video um, as I've kind of been referencing, he used something other than, uh, he used green, I think, for something that wasn't ground, which is a really, really bad idea. And so uh, always make sure green is only ground. And it also makes sense to keep black with black and white with white. Whereas, you know, that other video had black going to white and then white going to black, and it was really confusing. Um, especially for if you're trying to follow along in the video and see what the wires are actually going to. So I'll link this below. Um, that's the wires. And here is the, uh, the package of these crimps. They're heat shrinking crimps um, with solder built in. And then here's this box of uh, heat shrink only. A bunch of different sizes. You know, you get more than you're going to use for this project, but assuming that you're wiring up an automatic drain on your uh, air compressor, you're probably the type of person that's going to come in and do more than just one project. So we're going to take one of these guys here and one of these, and we're going to make our wire extension for our solenoid. And so what I've done is I've actually taken the wire I taped it together and ran it through my blue flex conduit and have my ends out here. And now the most important thing is that I want to cut my wires staggered. I don't want to cut them all the same length coming off the solenoid because then all three um, splices would be in the same spot. And one, one big part about that that's not going to work well in this half inch conduit is it's not going to fit. And the other part is, if that would ever chafe through, you don't want that to be right next to um, another splice. So here's one tool that I'll link in the description. These are automatic wire strippers. And I've had these for about six years now, going on seven, and they're amazing. All you do is you stick the wire in to whatever length you want and then just squeeze them like pliers and it cuts it and pulls it down and your wire stripped. It also has uh, a wire cutter right there and then kind of a cheap crimp on the bottom. I really don't ever use these. I, I use the cutters all the time but I don't ever use the crimps. For the crimps I got these, which I will also link in the bottom. These are one of the best investments I've ever made. It comes with, I think, six different jaw sets for different types of crimping. 
and I actually bought two. I bought one in, with yellow handles and one with orange because I use these to build wiring harnesses and I use two different sets of heads all the time. So I just have a dedicated set for each one. But these ratchet and they lock until you get to the end. And if you're somewhere in the middle and you want to stop, you just push up on this release here. So the way we are going to uh, make this, this work, I'll show you another strip here. First, we're going to take our heat shrink. And we're going to slide that over. I'm going to show you with the bigger one because it's it's not permanent, but this will just be quicker and easier. So you slide this guy over next. Then you bring the wires together, and you twist them together. And then you slide this um, soldering heat shrink back over until the soldering part is right in the middle. So then you'll heat, heat this slowly with the heat gun and this will actually melt and diffuse. And then you can take this piece of black heat shrink and slide it over just to give it another layer of protection since this is um, basically, uh, you know, 220 volts we're dealing with. Or technically it's 110 volts a leg, but 220 total. And here's the finished product. So it's really not bulky. It's about the same diameter as the wire. Um, the wire sheathing itself. So I really like this method a lot more than a crimp style that sticks way out. So now we've got our junction box mounted on the side of the compressor and we've got our line coming in from both the breaker box over here and going with our new line to our switch. And then we got our blue flex conduit going down. That's got our our valve or our solenoid. So we got all our wire coming up and here you can see we got two blue and a green coming from the breaker box. I ran a white, a black, and a green to the pressure switch and I ran a red, yellow, and green from the solenoid. All right, so this uh, compressor switch is extremely crowded. It's tight to work with. We've run our new wires from our junction box in here. So that's these three coming over. All right, so let's see if you can follow my wiring logic here. So this is the switch for the compressor. Here's my wires coming in on this side from the junction box. This side's going out to the compressor motor. So the compressor motor has a green wire, a white wire, and a black wire coming in. They actually thread into the bottom here. They got this uh, silicone wire um, instead of the THHN. And so what I did was I cut the spade terminal or the fork terminal off of the white wire coming from the motor. I ran a new little like three inch long piece of stranded 10 gauge that's also white. And then I got my 18 gauge that goes back to the the switch or the the time delay controller put those in a wire nut then I got a white wire coming in from the junction box over here I put both of the whites on the same side over here I have black on top of the black so now when I go back to my junction box now when I see this white wire coming out, I know what this is going to. I know this black just needs to get tied into a blue wire and that's it. And I know what this little white 18 gauge wire is for. So the more you try to color coordinate, the more it's going to help you out, especially if you have to make any repairs or modifications down the road. And so we're done with the switch side. So we can put the cover back on and we're done with this. And we never even had to dig into the motor. 
um, access panel over here. All this stayed sealed. This was the only thing that we had to modify and we're done with this part. All right, so now we need to hook up our solenoid valve to the air compressor. And to do that, we're gonna have to disassemble, since we've already got this wired in, um, to disassemble, it's actually really easy. So you pull down on this green part, push up on the, basically compress the whole thing, pop this red cap off, and this nameplate is actually like a circlip. So if I push down and compress it, holding just on the outer green part, this nameplate slides right off. And then the whole thing pops apart. And then you got this little spring washer in there, so don't lose that. But now we can take our uh, brass body and thread it into our air compressor. And I actually, we'll get to it in a second, but I actually already have this whole thing wired in because I wanted to test it out before I actually hooked it up. Just keep in mind when you're tightening it that this is going to dictate where you're electrical box points not to mention you have to be able to get it on so I'm going to point it not like that so if you ever have any leaks or anything here you pop it off like that it's real simple to service it this way And that's it. We'll open our ball valve so that it can actually drain out. And now my favorite part, the auto drain. I threaded back in this uh, push lock connector. And take my drain tube and push it in and then give it a pull back just to test it. And we're good. And that's done. It's so quick and easy to hook the hose up. So the wiring is actually very simple. We've got a green coming from our service panel, our breaker box. That's our ground. So I ran another stranded 8 gauge wire to the, uh, the switch. I ran another, just part of the stranded 8 gauge that I cut off. I ran it inside this little box here, so this box will be grounded, conduit will be grounded. Even though the everything's already grounded, it's just an extra ground, doesn't hurt to have it. And then here's our thin little 18 gauge coming out of the, uh, the solenoid valve. Okay, so that's all in one wire nut. Next, we have one of our blue 220 volt uh, wires coming from our service panel. And when you think about it, there's going to be two positive wires that are each 110 volts and then a ground. And each 110 wire adds up to 220. So one of them, we're just passing it right through to the switch. So all we did was put a wire nut in here. That's simple. That's done. Okay, what's next? We have our other 220 positive wire coming over. And so this black wire goes to our switch. We have our red wire coming up from our solenoid valve and then we want to transfer that power also to our little timer here. We plug that in right here to the number 14 slot. The yellow wire or the other positive wire coming off the solenoid valve, it gets plugged into 9 directly. That's it. And then last but not least we have our white wire that we ran previously. It connected to the uh, wire nut that went to the motor lead. This one actually gets spliced and run from the number one to the number 13. And I kind of cheated here a little bit and just ran two wires into one fork terminal because the amperage coming out of this is so incredibly low. Uh, this 18 gauge wire is overkill anyway. So, 
we're going to tuck all of this in here as neatly as possible put the plate on and we're going to test fire this thing all right and with everything fairly neatly tucked in here we're going to plug our timer in That's kind of the reason why you want to lock that fine line of not cutting your wires longer than you have to. Cut them short enough that you can fit them in here, but long enough that you can work on them when you have to. All right, so now I'm going to turn on the breaker. So I have some air in the tank. Less than 50 pounds, but it's enough that if this was not sealed I have this open it'd be leaking right here so as soon as I turn the power on we should feel some air maybe even see some water here goes nothing It opened up for two seconds and shut off and you can see all the disgusting water that came out. And overall, I'm pretty dang happy with how this turned out. The drain line really didn't change that much. Aesthetically, you know, the conduit, the blue blends in pretty nicely and it's tucked up off the floor. Nothing's sitting on the floor so I can still mop the underneath the, uh, the solenoid valve there. Um, up top here, nothing changed on the right side. From the front of the compressor, nothing changed on the left. It's not obvious that anything's different under the switch cover. You follow this over, come over here. Um, I have to zip tie that down to the uh, mounting foot yet, but you know, this comes in nicely, looks pretty clean. And then I ended up actually taking a hole saw and uh, just took this guy here. It's a inch and an eighth diameter and marked out where the, uh, the adjustment dial is. So I, I can actually see that I'm getting power if I want to check on this every once in a while. And I can actually come in here and turn that if I want to but I like it at two seconds I doubt that I'll ever mess with it so thanks again for watching thanks again for helping me grow my channel you're helping me to put out better quality videos by being able to buy a little bit better equipment now I'm really enjoying the upgrade hopefully you are too it's been a wild year I've gone from about a hundred subscribers up to a thousand in just a few short months so I'm excited to see where we're at this point next year, but for now, we'll see you on our next video.